a local guy who's a really a you know in the world of rock music and classic rock he's a big name uh denny somak i mean the dude uh kind of created the classic rock radio format uh he's a historian and an author and now he's got a book uh called a walk down abbey road uh about the beatles in where uh he interviews and talks to all these this is an interesting there's a million books about the beatles uh this is different in that other people in music are talking about the beatles denny uh up in boynton how are you buddy okay paul how are you <laughs> all right we're we're doing um our best in this insane asylum which I'm, is I'm okay all... can you hear me yeah, yeah you sound you sound great okay. I mean, you sound lovely okay um so the, the, I don't have the book yet. I, I, is it available on Amazon and all that? Yes, it's available on Amazon, and um, I sent your producer an electronic version so you can have it. But because we're, I don't know how soon it'll be before the physical ones get out there. But you can order it on Amazon. Yes. Um, did Yoko break up the Beatles? <laughs> no, oh. Yoko did not. And that's one of the most asked, one of the most asked questions I get. You know. Of course, that's why I wanted to ask it. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know you hear that. You hear that, but yeah, yeah. She did not break up the Beatles, and in fact, uh, a lot of people don't know this. But she's actually she co-wrote. I don't know if you know this story. She co-wrote Imagine, and they wouldn't give her credit originally because uh, John uh, John's publisher, you know anything about music publishing, said no, 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 no. We're not going to. You, you just want half the publishing of the song to go to her. We're not accepting it. You're the only writer. And it was just recently, about within the last year or so, that they rectified that, and her name now appears as the co-author on that song. Denny wow. Somak, his book is called uh, uh, A Walk Down Abbey Road. So you got in touch with Jimmy Page and and, uh, and Elton John and, and, and got their thoughts on uh, what it was like following the Beatles. You know, it's funny because what? those guys, were they were all coming along at the same time, but the Beatles broke first, right? Correct. And uh, those interviews, uh, it's taken me over 30 years to collect all these interviews. This is fascinating. Wow. Um, damn, yeah. And <laughs> even uh, right up to, uh, you know, I, and I still do interviews today, and I still look for Beatles stories. So I got a couple of really great ones last minute to throw in there. Well, what, you know, the one I'm fascinated by is, you know, everybody thought, that the, there was a rivalry between uh, Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. Uh, there was the right. Beatles, and it, but but in real life they were buds, were they not? They were, and the Beatles actually took uh, "I Want to Hold Your Hand." They rewrote it as "I Want to Be Your Man," and they gave it to the Stones, and that was their first single, and it went into the top twenty. You know, one wow. of the uh, one of the great stories that I never knew about was, and just I'm sure you've seen it by now, Denny. The uh, the the ZZ Top documentary that's on Netflix, and yes. that uh, yes. B Billy Gibbons and the guys uh, went. To, I think was it was it Hawaii toasted. They they went to Hawaii yeah. and and op and opened for them. And golly, yep. Or was that the Stones? Am I am I out of it? No, you're. The, you, I think you're talking about the Stones. It was the Stones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good try. You know, it's funny. There was there was always Good, two yeah, camps though. Right. There was always two yes, camps. Right. Uh, either you were a, Be a Beatle fan or you were a Stones fan. Uh, and it's funny, I, I as a little kid, uh, grew up, uh, my name was Paul, so I had to be Paul McCartney. I, had to, I dressed up like him, and right. you know, I but I was three, two, four years old, whatever. Um, and and um, as I got older, I really learned to appreciate the Rolling Stones as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, who gets more respect? Well... Obviously, the Stones are still around playing, and, and the Beatles aren't. But, you know, it's the Beatles and the Stones and Led Zeppelin. Those are the three pillars of uh, our generation. Uh, and they all, all three of those bands, particularly the Beatles, became cross-generational, which is why we're sitting here talking about them today. You know, I, I just I lost my dad last week, and it reminded me that uh, one of my proudest moments of his great career was that he was at Kennedy when the Beatles arrived and uh, I keep looking and I finally found his face in one of the pictures he took a couple of pictures wow. but wasn't in them obviously but it's really neat yeah uh, and the picture that he's in was taken by uh, uh, one of the Beatles publicists from the uh, the staircase leading down the plane into the waiting crowd and he was one of those guys in a black suit <laughs> and there were millions <laughs> of them but that was oh, you know I, I just love 
I love that he was there, and it meant so much to see that. Yeah. Uh, Denny, I, I can't wait to read your book, uh, Denny Somak, A Walk Down Abbey Road, with a forward by uh, Heather's favorite monkey, Mickey Dolan's. Um, yes, it's on, Dolan's a- on, forward. on Amazon now, and uh, can't wait to see it, buddy, and, and thanks for time, all right? Thank you very much for having me on, Paul. Enjoy the show, and uh, everybody stay safe. You, you got too. it, buddy. The new normal. This is Big 105. <laughs>